Tomorrow is Isla's school open house. I have a business trip, so I can't go. Can you go in my place? Huh? I told you to keep tomorrow free a long time ago. Don't get angry. It's work, so I can't help it, right? Ugh, it's always like this. I am Jada. I'm 32 years old. I have been married to my husband, Leon, for five years. Leon has a history of divorce and a daughter named Isla, who was taken care of by him for some reason. Five years ago, I became Isla's mother through my marriage to Leon. My first encounter with Leon was at work. I've been working as an employee ever since I graduated from university. Leon and I were in different departments, so I didn't know the fact that he was married or that he had a daughter until after we started dating. After dating for six months, Leon finally told me for the first time that he had a history of divorce and a child. At that time, Isla was living with her grandparents in Leon's family home. Leon was living alone in an apartment, so I didn't realize the existence of his daughter until then. Since Leon was busy with work and often away from home until late, Isla reached the conclusion that it would be safer for her to live with her grandparents so they live separately. In the first place, I don't know why Leon, as the father, took custody instead of the mother. When I asked about it before, Leon didn't seem willing to talk about it, so I didn't ask further. When I first learned about Isla's existence, I thought about ending my relationship with Leon. Becoming a mother figure to Isla, who was seven years old at the time, felt too burdensome for me. However, Leon pleaded with me, and I ended up meeting Isla once. Isla, I was certain, wouldn't accept me as her father's new spouse, and she probably wouldn't even make eye contact with me, or so I had anticipated. However, Isla unexpectedly warmed up to me. I still remember that face calling my name with a smile. We exchanged contact information and started messaging each other. Through our interactions, I began to think that maybe Isla would accept me as a family member. And one year after our first meeting with Isla, Leon and I decided to get married. After our marriage, Isla moved out of her grandparents' house and started living with us. It was also physically difficult for the elderly grandparents to take care of their grandchildren any longer. Moreover, I could return home earlier than Leon and ensure that Isla didn't feel lonely, which made my parents-in-law support the idea of living together. With that, our new life began. Initially after getting married, Leon would come home early and actively help with household chores. However, after about six months of marriage, Leon started coming home later and I ended up doing most of the housework. As for doing the housework alone, I didn't have that many complaints. The most challenging part was taking care of Isla. For Isla, I still felt like a relative rather than a mother figure and I couldn't possibly replace her actual mother. As a child, Isla also seemed aware of that, and I struggled every day not knowing how to interact with her. Even if I wanted to discuss it, Leon would come home late almost every day, and even on the rare occasions when he was at home. I don't really understand Isla's situation. With that kind of sentiment, I couldn't expect any useful advice from him, feeling that Leon was neglecting Isla too much. Leon, could you please pay a little more attention to Isla? I said but Leon responded. Wouldn't it be better if it's between women? You married me because you thought you could take care of Isla, right? Since you decided to become a mother, take responsibility. His words sounded as if it was someone else's problem, leaving me bewildered. However, Leon was right in saying that once I decided to become a mother, I had a responsibility towards Isla. I kept pondering how I could earn Isla's trust and took actions, only to end up with disappointing results. Isla was obedient and still engaged in conversations with me, albeit with some hesitation. However, around the time she reached fifth grade, she started showing distant behavior. Until then, we could have regular conversations and she would talk to me if something was bothering her, but suddenly she stopped approaching me. Is it an early stage of rebellion? I have no knowledge as a mother, and I could only be confused and troubled by Isla's sudden cold attitude. And so, with that kind of relationship, Isla entered 6th grade. Isla still responded coldly when I tried to talk to her, as always. On weekends, she would go to her grandparents' house, making sure not to meet me. It had been five years since I married Leon. I'd been trying my best to deepen the bond with Isla, but it was all my own delusion. Isla didn't consider me as a part of the family, and to make matters worse, Leon became even busier, leaving me feeling lonely. Gradually, Leon started going on more business trips, leaving the house vacant at least once a month. 
despite being her own father, my husband shows no interest in Isla, and I have been struggling to balance work, household chores, and my relationship with Isla, resulting in significant weight loss since our marriage. Personally, I was somewhat happy with the weight loss, thinking it was a good diet. However, I later heard that my colleague suspected I was ill. However, I still felt moments of happiness. Through marrying Leon and meeting Isla, I had the opportunity to experience various aspects of being a mother. Although our relationship may not be good at the moment, Isla used to be affectionate towards me, and I believed that we could eventually return to the way things were. In the midst of all this, the day of Isla's elementary school graduation was fast approaching. I took a day off for the graduation ceremony and made various preparations. While busy with the preparations, one day... I won't be able to attend the graduation ceremony, Leon suddenly said. Startled, I asked. Huh? But you took a day off, didn't you? I confirmed. There's an unavoidable business trip that I can't refuse, he said with an unapologetic face. I couldn't believe that Leon would prioritize a business trip over our daughter's graduation ceremony, so I pleaded with him to find a way to attend. However, Leon turned a deaf ear to my request. Since Leon and I work in different departments, I honestly don't have a clear understanding of his job responsibilities. Although I had a sense that his work was demanding with overtime and weekend shifts, I still believe that if he talked to his superiors, they could arrange for someone else to go on the business trip. Our company isn't known for being excessively demanding, so I couldn't help but feel a bit skeptical about Leon's explanation. It's such an important graduation ceremony. Can't you find a way to decline it? I said, but he replied, It's already decided. As long as you and her grandparents are there, I'll be fine, right? Leon said that and left the living room. I was left dumbfounded watching him walk away. Then right after, Isla entered the living room. I looked at Isla, anxious to see if she had heard our conversation just now. She looked down and asked, Dad, you can't come to the graduation ceremony, right? I panicked, realizing that she had indeed heard it. But since she already knew, I couldn't lie. Well, that's actually the case. A sudden business trip came up. I relayed the message, and Isla responded with just, I see. It's fine. Then she went into her room. I knew Isla must be hurt. Seeing her sad expression pained my heart. In an effort to cheer up my daughter, I tried to make her favorite meals and buy her favorite comics during the days leading up to the graduation ceremony. However, Isla's expression never brightened. And then, the day of the graduation ceremony arrived. As Leon was about to leave, Sorry, leaving the graduation to you, he said with a strangely happy expression and left the house. I couldn't fully accept Leon's business trip until the end, but I reminded myself that it was just work and there was nothing I could do about it, so I prepared for the graduation ceremony. At the graduation ceremony, Isla's grandparents attended in place of Leon, and the three of us, me and Isla's grandparents, watched Isla graduate. After the graduation ceremony went smoothly, on the way back, I sent a message to Leon to let him know that the graduation ceremony had ended. However, Leon only replied with an okay and didn't send any further messages. Does he not even have a single word of congratulations for the graduation? I sighed in exasperation and muttered in my heart, feeling the need to complain when he came back home. When we got home, Isla and I ate cake and watched our favorite TV show. I was happy to see Isla spending time with me in the living room for the first time in a long time. Then, suddenly, Isla turned back towards me and... Um... There's something I need to talk about. Perplexed by Isla's sudden serious expression, I remained silent and waited for her to start speaking. And what Isla said was something I never expected. Dad, he's cheating. Huh? Leon is cheating? Shocked by Isla's words, I left dumbfounded, and she gradually began to tell me about what had happened. According to her, when she was in fifth grade, she happened to come across Leon and an unfamiliar woman walking together, their arm's length, at a summer festival with her friends. Even though Leon tried to justify it by saying that the woman was just a friend, Isla, who has a keen intuition, didn't believe him, and she had been pleading with Leon to stop cheating. 
However, instead of apologizing, Leon brazenly refused to admit his mistake and, unbelievably, began to threaten Isla. If my affair gets exposed, Jada will disappear. <laughs> so keep your mouth shut. Upon hearing those words from Leon, Isla had been afraid of me leaving and had kept silent all this time. And because of her silence, Isla felt guilty and ended up adopting a cold attitude towards me. As I saw tears welling up in Isla's eyes while she was speaking, my heart grew heavy with pain. At the same time, I felt a sense of joy knowing that Isla didn't want to lose me. Looking back, I realized that Isla had started being distant since she was in fifth grade. I couldn't help but feel sorry for not noticing the pain she went through without being able to say anything. I embraced Isla, who was holding back tears with a sense of regret. I won't disappear, so don't worry. I reassured her. Isla seemed relieved to hear that. It was my own assumption that Isla was going through a rebellious phase, but it turned out that there were valid reasons behind her behavior, and I made up my mind that I couldn't let Leon continue as he pleased. First, I put Isla to bed, and then I contacted a colleague at work who was familiar with Leon in the same department. I wanted to confirm if Leon was really on a business trip today. My colleague confirmed that Leon was indeed on a business trip. However, they hesitantly continued with the following words. Actually, I've been meaning to talk about this, but your husband seems a bit suspicious, you know. According to my colleague, it is true that Leon goes on business trips every month. However, they mention that there is always one female employee accompanying him on those trips. Leon claims it's for mentoring the junior staff, but the frequency of their travels together has raised some rumors within the department. Upon hearing this, I immediately asked for the name of the hotel where Leon stays. The business trip destination is two hours from here by train. He says he plans to stay two nights for the convenience of his business partners. I had another paid day off the next day, so I decided to go there in person to see if Leon was having an affair. The next day, I left Isla at my parents' house and took the train to the hotel where Leon was staying. I never thought I was capable of such bold actions, but when it's for Isla's sake, I felt like I could do anything. And so, I arrived at the hotel. Thinking that Leon was out for work, I waited for his return at a nearby cafe. Unexpectedly, Leon and the woman came out of the hotel in casual clothes. There was a woman with long hair beside him. The two of them were arm in arm, heading somewhere with apparent joy. I took a picture with my smartphone, which I was holding up. After that, I continued to take pictures of the two of them walking arm in arm and enjoying their date while hiding and following them. However, they didn't notice my presence at all. They kissed and hugged each other, clearly giving off the impression of being lovers. I captured the entire incident in photos and videos and started my journey back home. As I arrived home, exhaustion hit me all at once. I never imagined that Leon would be cheating on me with a colleague. I was trembling with anger. In my anger, I immediately informed my parents and in-laws about Leon's infidelity. I sent the photos of the affair scene to my in-laws, and they quickly rushed over, kneeling and apologizing to me. My parents quickly brought Isla with them, and our home was filled with me, my parents, my in-laws, and Isla. Leon should be returning from his business trip soon. He would be quite surprised to see everyone gathered together. It would be quite a spectacle to see how he would try to come up with excuses. Since I didn't want Isla to witness the chaos, I asked my mother to accompany her and have Isla wait in her room. And then, two hours later, Leon returned home with a completely ordinary expression on his face. I'm so tired from the business trip. The person from the client company was so difficult, he complained as he entered the living room. Welcome back, Leon. As we all glared at Leon, he seemed surprised by the cold stares and the unusual atmosphere. Sensing the cold gaze and the tense atmosphere, Leon stumbled with his words and said, D Did everyone gather for Isla's graduation celebration or something? He started talking like that. Did you have a good time on your business trip? I asked while giving him a stern look, and Leon became even more flustered. It's work. There's nothing enjoyable about it. He replied with an unnecessarily loud voice. Then, unable to contain himself any longer, my father-in-law shouted at Leon. You've been cheating, you damn fool! Leon flinched as he was suddenly yelled at. 
Realizing that Leon didn't grasp the situation, I proceeded to tell him about my visit to his business trip location that day, showing him the evidence of photos and videos to confront him about his affair. As there was concrete evidence against him, Leon couldn't escape and reluctantly admitted to his infidelity while becoming defensive. Coming to my business trip location? How unfair of you. Were you doubting me? Leon tried to play the victim, so I informed him that the affair rumors were already circulating within the company. This only made Leon more flustered. Did he really think he could openly parade around with his junior colleague without getting caught? I couldn't help but be disgusted by what a foolish man he was. Under the scrutiny of everyone, Leon became resentful and uttered, The reason I married you in the first place was to offload the responsibility of taking care of Isla. He said those words boldly. As I was taken aback, Leon began to speak the truth. It turns out that Leon's previous marriage ended because of his infidelity. Leon explained that his previous wife had struggled mentally and couldn't take care of Isla, so he had no choice but to take custody of her. Isla's mother had a history of illness and was emotionally unstable, so Isla expressed a desire to be with her father rather than her mother. However, Leon was initially indifferent to parenting and found himself overwhelmed by Isla, so he used his work as an excuse to pass the responsibility to his parents' house. However, perhaps due to concerns about societal perception of living separately from his daughter, Leon came up with the idea of remarrying to secure a woman who would take care of Isla. That's how I ended up being chosen as the convenient woman. Realizing that I had been deceived from the beginning, I felt frustrated, pathetic, and tears welled up. Leon had planned to burden me with everything while he intended to have affairs with other women. Both my in-laws and my father were furious. They yelled at Leon and my father-in-law even held Leon's head down while making him apologize. Despite everything, I couldn't stop crying and as I lay on the floor, Isla came out of her room and embraced me. Mom, please don't cry. I was surprised when Isla called me Mom. Ignoring my frozen state, Isla glared at Leon and said, To cheat again? That's despicable! Even Leon, faced with his daughter's words, seemed unable to respond. While holding Isla tightly, I confronted Leon with a demand for a divorce. Leon exclaimed, Please, spare me the divorce. What about Isla's well-being? His self-centered statement, even at this point, filled me with disgust. Naturally, I intended to take custody of Isla, Looking into Isla's eyes, I asked, What do you want, Isla? Isla replied, I want to go with Mom. Leon was easily discarded by Isla, and he seemed to be shocked by it. After hardly taking care of her all this time, did he actually think he would be chosen? I informed the shocked Leon that I would be seeking compensation from him. Regarding custody, it would be difficult for me to obtain it. However, my in-laws convinced Leon and we reached an agreement that he would provide child support. As a result, I and Isla were able to live together successfully. I was also able to receive compensation from the affair partner, and since I am working myself, I'm not financially struggling. Due to my report of Leon's affair to the HR department, both Leon and his affair partner were transferred to different departments. Furthermore, news of the affair somehow leaked, and the affair partner was seen with disapproval by those around her, losing her place and eventually resigning. Leon, as a man who abandoned his daughter for another woman, has also lost trust and is not doing well on his job. Next month, he is scheduled to be transferred to a small regional branch, as indicated in the notice. I am encouraged by my colleagues and receive support and advice on parenting, and I am doing my best as a mother. Isla, who is already in middle school, helps me by cooking dinner or assisting with laundry when I have to work late. Both my in-laws and my parents have been helping me, and despite the challenges, we are leading a fulfilling life. However, I sometimes worry if Isla feels lonely, or if she is truly happy living with just me. But when I see Isla enjoying herself and not showing any signs of missing her father, even after he's gone, I feel that we made the right decision. Since then, Isla has gradually started calling me mom. Although we are not biologically related, I want to build a genuine parent-child relationship from now on. <laughs>